let me know. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Sorry, we're a few minutes late. Uh, during the uh, declared emergency, Committee of Adjustments, virtual public hearings are being conducted by electronic means through WebEx and an online digital platform and streamed on the Toronto City Planning YouTube channel. These measures are necessary to comply with physical distancing requirements and in-person attendance limitations. My name is Isaac Laluz, and I will be chairing the hearing. Uh, for those who just joining us uh, this afternoon, we have a new member. Her name is Gillian Sizzling, uh, and we, um, Ms. Siskind, and we, uh, the other members are Ms. Satarodi, Mr. Bartolo, and Mr. Klassen, and city staff. Uh, moderating today are uh, Kelly Reed, Brandon Clapp, and and Mr. Nan and, and and then Antonacci, who is the Deputy Secretary Treasurer of the Committee, and we'd like to thank them for helping us moderating the uh, the session. Participants who have registered in advance will be able to make their presentation to the committee using the said WebEx and anyone wishing to view the hearing may do so by watching on YouTube. These participants will be connecting either by their computer, a phone, tablet, app, or by telephone. All participants will automatically be muted on entry. When your item is called, each participant will be unmuted by the moderator one person at a time. Only the committee members will be participating by video and any registered speaker will be participating by audio only. We ask that you also mute your devices until you're called on to speak. <clears throat> For all those waiting to online to speak, please make sure you call with the, with the phone number that you originally registered with. Calling with a different number, you will not be able to speak on the item, and please make sure not to use the speaker phone function on your telephone. For land acknowledgement, we acknowledge the land we are participating, we are meeting on, is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat people, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis people. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. In accordance with Section 45 and 53 of the Planning Act 1990 as amended, this meeting of the Committee of Adjustment of the City of Toronto, or the City of Toronto is called to order. The Committee of Adjustment considers applications for variances from the provision of the zoning bylaw, permission to extend or alter legal non-conforming uses, and consent to sever property to, a, a, to, make, to create new lots. Anyone in attendance today who wants to receive a copy of the decision of the committee on an application must submit a written request for a decision by email. Please ensure that you include your name, address, and email address because Committee of Adjustment and, is, and the TLAB will be sending notifications and appeal updates by email only. If you do not agree with the decision of the committee, decisions may be appealed to the Toronto Local Appeal Body known as TLAB or in some limited circumstances to the local planning appeal tribunal known as LPAT. Appeal instructions are set out at the bottom of the decision of the committee. The hearing procedure are as follows. I will call each item in the order listed on the agenda. Where an application is uncontested, the agent or applicant will, may proceed with their presentation if desired and when the committee does not require presentation, applicants are to advise the chair should they wish to speak to the committee, and the committee may ask questions of each speaker after they make the decision. Uh, each speaker, including the applicant agent, will be given a maximum of five minutes to address the committee. I will comment when the five minute mark is reached. When addressing the committee, please clearly state your name and address. And please remember to confine your remarks to the matters 
outlined in the application. The applicant or agent will proceed first and will make a presentation to the committee. Please note that the committee may not entertain revisions to proposals at the hearing today. <coughs> the committee may decide to defer the application if substantially revised to ensure the revised application is accurate and all those entitled to receive a notice are informed of the decision of the changes. Then individuals either in support or in opposition to the application will be invited to speak. Committee members may ask questions of each speaker at the end of their presentation. When all speakers are finished, the applicant agent may has the chance to address only those issues that were raised by the speakers. This will mark the end of the discussion and the application will be taken into committee for decision. Now, for this afternoon session, members and staff, any conflict of interest to declare? Hearing none. So, um, there is no uh, no files to close. Uh, Mr. Deputy Secretary Treasurer, any files to close? No, no files to close. Thank you. Okay, so our uh, our first item of the afternoon is item 24, which is uh, three Avon Hill Court, and here we have just one speaker, the agent. Sean Tusi, are you there? Yes, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. Uh, for the record, my name is Sean Tusi. I'm the office principal at Mimar Architects, Inc., 2323 Youngest Street, Unit 503, Toronto, Mary 4 Peter 2 Charlie 9. Thank you. That's what I wanted to ask you. Your address is okay. Now, this application is for uh, a new dwelling. We have 10 variances. There is a staff report which asking, uh, saying that the applicant modified the variance number two, and they're asking a condition to develop her, her site plan, and there's a forestry condition. Now, since there is a change here, could you please make a short uh, presentation and tell us what you're changing in your, in your variances? <coughs> Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, I'm, I'm going to just check with my colleague um, just to confirm on, on the change that the planning is, um, um, is, is, is referring to. Is it okay if I put you in a few seconds on, on, on hold just while, while I confirm that? Because okay. my understanding was I, the change is not going to impact the, the look or, or, or when, when if she answers, then I'll, I'll just put you but I start. Yeah. So this is a new, new house. Excuse me. Um, and, um, can, we, can we get the drawings? Yes. Hold, hold it. Impact or no impact, we have to know what you're changing in the variances that we have to approve. Now, as far as the staff is concerned, they said that you, the applicant, modified variance number two, south side here set back from 1.22 to 1.52, but you're the one who has to uh, confirm it, not me. Yeah, no, Mr. Chair, don't you have is, is what we are we're planning to proceed. So uh, none of the variances are going to change. And with that, I will. Um, so what, changes what do you want to do? My owner's only change that affects the so, so that we went. Up. What do you want us? You want to hold on or what? Uh, Mr. Mr. Chair, can I can I ask you a favor? If 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 it is possible to stand down this file and and, and attend the next one, and uh, this this will give okay. me a chance, a couple of seconds to okay, you're clear this out with my office, and then I can come back for the next one. Yeah, you're the only one registered here, so we can hold on. So okay, we'll go to the next one. Item twenty five, which is five three three Glen Grove Avenue. And this is also just one uh, speaker who is Sarah Efra. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, you know who you are, but we still need you to state your name and address. No problem. Sarah Efra from Sarah Efra Architect Inc. Address is 75 Dapwa Road, Suite 201A, like Apple, M6A2W4. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, again, the staff is asking to refuse variance number two related to the story, to the three story or developer's site plan. Transportation has no objection. There is forestry and, um, and I understand there are four letters of support. So please go ahead and give us a short, very short presentation since there is a three story and change here. Exactly. Okay, so to continue with my animal analogy from this morning, the Great Dane in the room, I'm calling it a Great Dane versus an elephant, because there's two variances here that I think are important to bring forward. Um, one is the three story and the other one is the length. So if you could put up the drawing um, that is the correspondence from March 25th. Um, okay, so Hopefully we can scroll scroll back to the beginning of that. The beginning of it actually is my email, but I'd like to start kind of looking at the at the plan. So if you can, okay, so next page and then the next one after. Keep scrolling. Okay, perfect, let's start there. Okay, so in terms of the length, the, the length variance that we have is misleading. It's 25.11 meters. That's because it is measured from underneath the, the front kind of steps going up. We have a garbage room underneath those steps. So that's actually where the length starts from in terms of the technical measuring of the length. But if you look at the site plan that's in front of you right now, which again is not in context of the houses beside it, you can see the absolute longest length we have is 21.03, which includes a one story at the front and a one story at the back. But if you look at the east and the west sides, our longest length on the east side is actually only 17.83. And on the west side, is 17.37. So if you then scroll to the next drawing, I showed, I think that shows it in the elevation, which is why, oh, okay, we can talk about this then. Let's talk about this, because this can this can tell you things about the, uh, the three story as well while we're at it. Um, the house itself is actually only a two story dwelling. We see our front door, and then there's three windows to the left of it, and then we've got our windows above. Those are the two stories. What's below it is our garage. Our garage is at grade. We don't propose below grade garages anymore unless we wanna spend lots of time at the T-Lab. But a way to get out of calling it a three story would be to drop our basement significantly. Now, my client has significant physical disabilities in terms of mobility. So we've chosen this type to be able to drive into the garage and then go straight up either by an elevator, which we haven't finalized whether it would be an elevator or a chairlift yet, but that's the idea is to be able to drive straight in and go up. But this house is only two stories. We also remain within our allowable height limit under the new bylaw. Under the old bylaw, we have a bit of a variance, but again, that's where the crowd and center line of road is. I think if you go to the next drawing, um, I can kind of get you back on the on the length thing. Okay, and then here again, we can we can look at it from the side. So if we look at the right side of the drawing, that kind of 4.06, that part there with that tiny little door where underneath it says porch and stairs, that's where that garbage room is. So our front yard setback starts there, our length of dwelling starts there. But as you can see, as you kind of move to, you know, towards the left side of the drawing, the house is very much in keeping with all the other types of homes in the neighborhood. Um, and the part that's kind of with the red dashed line and, and dotted beyond is a bit of a two-story portion and then our one-story breakfast room. And I think if you go to the next slide, it's a, it's a picture of a house that has a similar type. Again, trying to express to you, you know, that it, it really is a two-story house. It's not a, it's not a three-story house. So this is a few doors away. You see how they have the garage at grade um, and then they've got you know, let's say a living room, and then they've got a, a window above. Now, I would say our house is less impactful because we've kept it with a sloped roof and underneath our, our height allowable. Um, but that's a similar type um, that that they've used there. And again, the reason we chose that type was really for mobility issues, probably similar to the one that you heard earlier today on uh, Glen Park, um, where they ended up with a three-story technical variance because they were bringing an elevator from the you know garage level up. So in terms of my presentation, again, I think I've gone through the things that sound complicated, but if there are any questions, 100%, I'm here to answer. Okay, thank you. Any, uh, yeah. any questions?
for this uh, applicant? If not, can I have a motion, please? Ms. Atarodi? Um, yes, to you, Mr. Chair, I would like to put forward a motion to approve this application with um, uh, with, the, with the staff condition that the proposal be developed substantially in accordance with the site plan and best site elevation drawing submitted to committee of the adjustment and, and um, so sorry, it's application 24. 24 and and um, tie it to this uh, forestry, even forestry and transportation. Very good. Thank Please. you. Thank you. Second. Sorry, did you say application 24? Because no, we're on no, application no, no, 25. No, no, I, I know what she meant. No. It's okay, five. Okay. It's <laughs> five, three, Got three, Glen Grove, because it's number 24. Exactly. Number 24, we, we have we have it on hold. So she, Got she, it. she okay. she's talking to five, three, three, Glen Grove, which is application yep. 25. So I and 24 have, doesn't, have a, doesn't have transportation or forestry condition. It was my mistake. There is forestry. Yes, transportation and forestry yeah. for this application. Yes. Correct. Per yeah. Perfect. So I had uh, Ms. Siskind. Did you have a, did you do a second? Yeah. Okay. Ms. Siskind is seconding. On, all in favor? Okay. Is unanimous approval? Based on those conditions, so you're uh, thank you. You're you're lucky today. Should buy a lottery ticket. <laughs> thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Have a great day. You too. Uh, the other one is not back. Number twenty-four. Number 24. Okay. Okay. Seventy-six York Minster, application number twenty-six. Se <laughs> Bless you. 76. Good afternoon, committee. My name is Fausto Cortez. I'm the agent representing the owner. Um, okay. Address is 30, 3590 yeah. Rutherford Road, Unit 7, Vaughan, Ontario, L4H, 3T8. Very good. Okay. So you're ahead of us. So we have this um, this here, 26, which is uh, that's for a, a new loggia and a new cabana. And... Uh, we have, um, okay, so that's uh, staff report said refuse the application. So uh, based on this, we need you to make a presentation and tell us what's going on. Thank you, committee. So um, when we took on this file, we, uh, we, we understood that there was a variances that were taken when the existing dwelling was uh, constructed. Um, however, we didn't understand or we did not uh, know what those variances were. Uh, so when we proposed the, uh, ex the proposed lodge and cabana, we felt that, you know, we weren't setting any sort of precedences or we weren't, uh, we wouldn't set off any sort of red flags due to the fact that the loggia is open on three sides and it's really just a covered porch. And and as you can tell, the the cabana is as uh, or just bathroom enclosure actually is uh, is as modest as you can possibly get it for a for a cabana. We 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 educated our clients uh, in 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 telling them that uh, you know the cabana needed to be very small uh, because we didn't want to uh, make the structure and overbearing in any fashion. Um, however, uh, we did receive uh, staff's report, and we understand that there's concerns there. Now, I felt I feel that it's probably most prudent for us is to, um, since receiving the report, actually, we've reached out to the builder who built it in 2008. We tracked them down, and um, and uh, he's agreed to give us the drawings for the original home. Uh, and at that point in time, I think it's most prudent to determine exactly how the original sizing of the home was determined and to make sure that there's no discrepancy between our 37.71% coverage of the existing dwelling and what was proposed in 2008. Um, that would be my, my comment number one. And then based on that, I think it would be prudent to come back and speak uh, regarding these loggia and the cabana, because I don't think, to be quite honest, I don't think the loggia and cabana are, are overbearing in any fashion. You know, I think they're very modest in size. Um, however, I, I, I understand 
uh, you know, planning's comment, they see it as a number and it's a, it's a, you know, it's a higher number. Um, and, but I think in terms of when you're, when you stand in the, in the location and you see the homes around it, uh, I don't think it will be overbearing in, at all or, or, um, excessive at all. Okay, um, so but I understand the number is high. So in, in other words, you you want it to be deferred, right? I think it's most. I think it's best for everyone, uh, including yeah. committee, to have a more un, um, a better understanding of the thirty seven point okay. seven one, okay, and make sure that that is actually the right number. I understand what you think. I want you to ask you. Do you want us? To, are you requesting a deferral? I think I yes, I am. Okay, all right. So you request deferral to address this concern. Let's see what the any questions for uh, or a motion for deferral. Mr. Klassen. Oh, you just moved your hand. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. I will move to defer this item so that the applicant is able to review the plans and and uh, Sunny Die. Sunny Die, thank you. Second. Yeah, it's it's the thing so uh, the screen is so black. No, I I see Miss Sankar. Miss Sankar, second. Ms. Sankar, second, all in favor? Okay, so your, I'm at your application is deferred sunny day and you can check with the staff when it's coming back. Thank you. Yeah, yeah I'm, uh, I'm gonna be very slow here because I don't see the hands. Something is happening with the screen. <laughs> okay, the number 24 is not back yet, huh? Give him more time. Okay. Twenty item twenty seven, which is four oh seven Saint Germain Avenue, item twenty seven, and we have here the agent, and we have one more speaker. So the agent, uh, Mr. Uh, Mendihan, Mendizen, can you please uh, state your name and address it is there? Good afternoon, Mr. Chair and committee members. My name is Mandy Zen. I'm here today on behalf of the owner of 407 St. Germain Avenue. Okay, and my can, address can you is, give us can you give us your address, please? Uh, and my address is 1100 Golden Baker Law. Thank you. Please go ahead. Uh, should I proceed a uh, presentation? Yes, please. Okay, my pr our pr proposal is a new built two story single family dwelling with attached garage. I'd like to comment briefly on the individual variances in front of us. With variances number 1, 2, 4, 5, 9, 10, and 11 are all related to the west and east side loss setbacks. The design of the house has individual to minimize the building width as much as possible. However, the minimum building code requirements for the garage width and the staircase have triggered the side yard variances. This lot require, is quite narrow with only 7.62 meter lot frontage. Therefore, the new house requires both west and east side yard setback variances. Please note that the building would in fact be 0.35 meter further away from the east lot line than the current house. And there, there were many granted side yard setback variances with less than 0 0.6 meter in the surrounding neighbors, such as 462 St. Germain Avenue and 360 Fairlong Avenue. And the variances number three related to the rear deck projection. We are asking 0 0.4 meter over, which is quite minor. The variance number six is related to the maximum finished first floor height, and we are asking for 0.15 meter extra. Variances number seven and eight in regards to the building length and building depth. The permitting maximum building length is 17 meters and the permitting maximum building depth is 19 meters. And we're proposing 20 meters building length and building depth to ensure not blocking the view and sunlight for the adjacent neighbors. The second floor is received by 2.5 meters which is 17.5 meters in length. There were many similar approvals allowed over 20 meters in the building length and depth in 
the surrounding neighbors, such as 357 Fairlawn Avenue and 390 Merrill's Avenue. The variants number 12 and 15 are related to the parking width. The parking width, since the proposed during is quite narrow with only 5.95 building width and to ensure the two staircase in the basement meets the building code requirements. The limited width of the garage is 3.05 meters, which is slightly less than the permitting width minimum width of the parking space. At last, the variances number 13 and 16 are related to the main wall height and building height. The proposed building height is complied with the new city bylaw 569-2013, while it's 0.47 meters over than the permitting maximum height under the old North York bylaw. Understanding the committee does not use precedent. We do believe this proposal is consistent with appropriate to the development of this community. We believe these variances are minor in, in nature and meet the four tests. Thank the committee, committee members for your time and consideration, and I ha I'm happy to answer any questions. Okay. Um, did you, you read the transportation, they're asking to refuse number 12 and 15. Are you are you making any changes? Uh, are there, uh, do you have any suggestion for for our application? If I have what? Oh, uh, the suggestion. No, no, no. We don't. For we our don't, application. No, we don't suggest. Is you what you what you want to do? And we'll we'll we'll, uh, we'll consider what you're asking for. Is not asked to suggest or work with you on the application. I just mentioned if you saw the uh, the staff asking for refusal of number twelve and fifteen. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So, so my there's so many speakers. My clients. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, my client would like to park two cars in the driveway. So we we will need. Of 5.02 meters in width for the driveway. You want to park to driveway the driveway. Okay, well we'll see what. Uh, yes. We'll see. Okay, uh, we'll we'll get you back after we hear from the other speaker and the members may have some questions. So the next uh, the next person in uh, listed here is Robert and John Allen. Are you there? Yes, uh, we're here, Mr. Chairman. Thank oh, you for okay. hearing us. Can you please state your name? And we only have a few comments. I'm sorry. Just state your name and address, please. The name is Robert Allen and Joanne Allen, J-O-A-N-N. -N. Uh, we're at 1717 Avenue Road. Okay. So tell us what's your concern. Uh, a few comments. I'm sorry. What's your concern? Uh, we have a, a few concerns. First is that... Um, Looking over the application, and uh, we're we're close by. We're not next next door neighbors. We're very close by. Uh, we see sixteen bylaw um, requested changes. So that's that struck us on first view. It's it's quite a few, and what it leads to is a is a longer, taller, and wider building uh, on the lot as it was uh, planned for. I, I we believe that. Generally speaking, there's always room for certain changes to take place, but generally speaking, uh, the lot should determine the size of the building, not vice versa. In this case, it seems that regardless of the bylaws, that the request was made to change many bylaws to uh, to accommodate the, the builder. And that just doesn't seem quite right to us. It impacts neighbors. We've had a similar experience in the past when we owned a house uh, not that far away. And uh, it, it infringed upon our privacy and our and our enjoyment of our, our property. I don't think that such changes should just be accommodated and agreed to, and not uh, not debated more thoroughly or or at least given a, a lot of consideration as as opposed to just being approved. I don't know if there are other people involved in in the discussion today, but I would hope that they would voice 
some similar pains. I won't take up more of your time, but our, our concern is that it's, it's, we don't feel it's appropriate and so uh, reduced accommodation should be made. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, if I recall in your letter, you mentioned that you are, you are a former owner. Are you, do you still live in the area? Uh, yes, we our, our building is actually a condo. It's on Avenue Road, uh, just uh, a few houses down from where the new building is proposed to go up. It's between Saint Germain and Fairlawn. Okay. Any any questions to this uh, speaker? No. Okay. So we'll get back the uh, agent, uh, Miss uh, Mindy. So regarding the. The driveway with we have similar approval we found is 370 St. Germain approved with 5.01 meters with for the parking space. And since the, since the planners has no objection on our proposal, we believe our application is minor to the nature and meet the four tests. Okay. So Okay, all you're saying is it fit the more tests, but you're not making any changes, right? Yes. Okay. Any questions? Any questions mm -hmm. to item number 27? No? If not, can I have a motion, please? Any any questions for okay? Go ahead. Mr. Bartolo, you're first. No, no questions, just a motion if somebody had questions. Please, then. please go ahead. Yeah, we ask for questions. Okay. Yeah. Okay, no problem. Uh, th thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I, I recognize that uh, the lot is very narrow and it's uh, difficult to work with some of these, but uh, I'm you know, uh, familiar with the area and I think it's consistent with the pattern of redevelopment in the area. So I'm going to put forward a motion uh, to approve this application uh, subject to the uh, the two recommendations that it be proposed uh, uh, substantially in accordance with the site plan, uh, west and east elevation drawings submitted to the committee of adjustment and it, as attachments one, two, and three of this report, and uh, the second that the applicant provide permanent opaque screening or fencing along the east edge of the property, uh, rear deck and front porch with a minimum height of 1.5 meters from uh, the floor of the platforms. And uh, do they have forestry? And, yes, and uh, we'll make it subject to the three conditions in the urban forestry memo. Thank you. Second. <laughs> Mr. Uh, Mr. Klassen, second. All in favor? Two. Oh, three. Miss, Mrs. Kendi, okay. And opposed? Mr. Tarodi is opposing. Okay, uh, your application is approved. Subject to those conditions. Did you get the condition or you want me to repeat them? Yes, thank you. Okay. Is 24 back? Okay. 24. Okay, Mr. Tusi, you're back. Yes, Mr. Chair. Yes, thank you so much um, for for the opportunity to to stand on the application. I've cleared the uh, the matter, and with your permission, when I receive, it, I can do the presentation. Just for the report, do I need to reinstate my name and address, or? Uh, well, uh, okay, you can restate it if you want to. You don't have to. We, we have okay, your, so we have your so name. Mr. Chair, in the office. Okay, then then let's just skip that part and save every time. Um, so if we can uh, bring up the drawings and uh, preferably look at the side plan, which is the drawing eight oh one, please. Um, so this application was in front of you, uh, like two, I believe, two weeks ago, and because the city had a mistake in uh, um, circulating the notice, it was apparently a computer glitch. So it was it was postponed to today. So. Uh, in that previous application, we had that comment from planning um, to, to reduce the setback of the south side of the building, which if if the staff will be able to help me assist me in showing that part for the members or, or zoom, zoom in to the, uh, to the south setback. And we did accommodate that, we did accept that. So the application you have in front of you, the list of variants in front of you has been changed to a accommodated 
can see comments. And as you can you, you look at the drawings on the south side of the drawing, as well as this, which is the south side of the building as well, uh, the number is adjusted to 1.52. So we, we did accommodate planning and the variances you have in front of you in the public notice are reflecting the changes that the planning requested. So that, that was the sort of a I'm confused. Using a misunderstanding that I cleared it out. Um, um, and um, it, it, it is a typical new house. It, it, as you can see in the drawing, the shape of the lot is very odd shape, and we work with planning very closely. Um, they didn't want um, like like the biggest issue was the setback, the rear yard, you know, setback because of that kind of jog in that coming, which is from the backyard of another property, and they didn't want to increase that like numerically. And uh, it would make the deck and everything else close to the back door. So we, in our discussion with the planning, we 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 kind of decided to push the house a little bit more, more forward, which caused that front yard setback. Um, in terms of the building depth, um, again, it's a really technical because the way this is measured um, of an odd shape of the property it measures diagonally. Um, if you if it is possible to zoom in on that south side yard. Um, this is our longest, this is our deepest building depth section in the building. And, and if you look at those drawings, that's about 15.87. So while numerically what we're asking for variance is a bigger number, technically we're even below the bylaw, which is 17 meters, or even below that. Um, and as you look at it, the backyard and front yard, we're very much in line with the neighbors on both sides. We are offering generous setback. Um, on, on the north side, only for the garage portion, we're, we're offering you know, close to the property line. And after that, we're even offering more setback than the bylaw requires. So all in all, I believe this is a very reasonable application. The variances, the, the lot coverage, everything is very in keeping, not only with the both neighbors on both sides, but also what has been uh, submitted to you before and is more in a, in, a, in a small side. So we believe it meets the four tests of the bylaw. And if there's any questions, I would be happy to answer you or the members. Thank you. Okay, so in other words, you you already changed the one to two to one point five two. Is that what you're saying? Yes, Mr. Chair. That's okay. the variance number two, and which pertains to the side yard setback. And that is reflected in the current uh, plan. So if uh, if the if the members decide to attach to the site plan, the site plan you're submitting there is already including the change, is that correct? Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay, because the list I have here, it still shows the variance number one, 1.22. That's the current thing we have here, March 11. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, the, 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 the variance number one pertains to the to the north side where the garage is, and uh, that that did not need to change. So the no, 1.2 no, is correct. No, the one that did change. Yeah, I'm talking about uh, variance number two. It, it still says 1.22. Yeah, oh, okay. So, so that's. Oh, okay, then you are probably looking at the older one that from last two weeks. Um, so the one that was sent to the public notice, the one that was sent to public, which the date I am looking at as we speak, um, it was sent to public on Monday, March 22nd. Okay. Uh, that, that one is correct. That one, the variance two. Um, the proposed south side yard setback is 1.52. That's the one perfect. that public okay. received, and that's the one that we're proposing. Okay, okay. Yeah. Per perfect. Okay. Uh, any questions? Uh, Ms. Tarodi? Yes, to you, Mr. Chair, I would like to uh, get explanation regarding variance number seven and ten. Did you hear that? <laughs> explanation about yes, seven. Mr. Chair. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, so if it, if it is possible to look at um, the the drawings for on the elevations, I believe that's the um, the heights of the. Um, the side yard, if you can look at that. Uh, while we're doing it, I will explain on the variance number uh, 10, uh, which um, it, this, like typically when the houses are in the cul-de-sac, uh, what, what happens, um, it, it measures from, from the middle of the road. So um, in this a specific um, side, because it's the end of that cul-de-sac, um, it, it makes the, um, the house 
um, the lot, the grading higher than what the middle of the street is. So it's very much related to what we have here. If you look at the actual site, we have a, like a typical of 1.2 meter, which is under the new bylaw uh, for, for the main floor height. And that's why uh, that is not being a variance under the new bylaw. Uh, so because the middle of the, the street is lower, and the reason is the uh, the, the combination of a slope that causes the drainage so that the road is actually at that sort of endpoint for the drainage of the, the city water is lower, and that is causing um, this, this number um, under the old bylaw to go beyond because the old bylaw, the way it measures, it measures from the center point of the street to where the actual ground floor is. But in tech, in, in, and, and that's like a sort of a technical number, but in reality, uh, the ground floor um, is just 1.2 meter above, and that's why there's no variance under the new bylaw. And then the main wall height um, is, is typically what you you, you would see on any other requests as well. So uh, we we wanted a, a little bit of a sort of a, a, a no, no sort of angle on the second floor corner walls, and that is causing um, the, uh, the, 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 the the about half a meter. But as you see, we're not asking for any any variance on um, uh, any 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 other uh, sort of a, um, a variance beyond that. It's um, it is less than. It's literally 40 centimeter. It's it's less than one and a half feet. Okay. Thank you. Does that answer your question? Yes. Thank okay, you. Thank you. Okay. Any other question? If not, can I have a motion, please? Okay. Um, Mr. Klassen. Oh, yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, Thank you for the presentation. Um, I will move to approve this application. There are a number of variances, but they're minor ones and explained. And I will tie it also to uh, to uh, urban uh, to uh, uh, urban forestry. And also that the proposal will be developed substantially in accordance with the site plan drawing. Thank you. Um, second, Ms. Siskin. All in favor? Okay, unanimously. Uh, your application is unanimously approved, subject to those conditions, okay? Thank you, Mr. Chair and the members. Have a great day. You too. 28, right? <laughs> okay. Item number 28, which is 12 Hartley Avenue. 12 Hartley Avenue. Yeah. Item number 28, and we have one person registered, the agent, Mr. Peter Peter Higgins. Mr. Peter Higgins, Mr. are you there? Yes, I am, Mr. Chairman. Okay, can you please? Uh, I'm Peter Higgins of Peter H I'm Peter Higgins of Peter Higgins Architect Incorporated, 124 Merton Street, Suite 204 in Toronto. Excellent. Okay, so we have here. Um, uh, the uh, staff report, just a condition, and we have mm -hmm. three, and we have two letters of support. Uh, staff members, do we need the presentation? If none, um, Mr. Higgins, I don't see. Uh, um, can I appreciate a quick presentation. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Higgins. Could you please you give us a, a short yes. presentation? And I'll give you the usual five minutes. Thank you. Uh, my clients have recently purchased this uh, corner lot uh, in an established neighborhood, and they have uh, two young children, and they would like to build a beautiful new home for themselves, their forever home. Um, you should know that we hand delivered 14 packages to the neighbors uh, all around. All immediate neighbors, we received, you mentioned two letters. There are three letters on file 98 Joyce 
five, um, oh, what's the name? 91 Joycey. Shoot, got all my notes right here. Where have they gone? Okay. It's okay. So the immediate neighbor to the west has not signed a letter of support, but there's been um, a lot of back and forth between my clients and that neighbor. And at this point, they seem to be uh, satisfied, although they haven't written any letters accordingly. Um, we worked with the planning department because there was concern. And if you could bring up the site plan, please, the revised site plan, it's a colored site plan that shows the existing house. Um, okay, thank you very much. So what we did is we reduced the length of the uh, west wall, which is the top wall, uh, as it relates to the neighbor to the west. And we did that by shortening the master bathroom area. We um, shortened it by about a meter, so it, it lessened any impact that might be had on the neighbor to the west. Um, we were working with the planning department on things like front yard setback and rear yard, et cetera, et cetera. It's a slightly oddly shaped lot. We've decided to parallel the house to uh, Harley, which is to the bottom of the screen. And in doing so, we have uh, a little bit of a pinch point along the west property lines at the top, uh, but that pinch point, which is at approximately one meter, a little over a meter, does expand at the far uh, right side, which is the north to almost two meters. Um, so there's a small sliver of uh, variance there. The, um, the house has a very small uh, roof height variance. Uh, the roof is fully hipped and we have no uh, wall height variance. The roof being fully hipped means that it's just not having any impact, even though we have a very small variance at the top most port portion of the roof. Um, the wall height in this case with a very fairly low sloped uh, uh, roof, and if you can just please go to the front facade, um, means that the neighbors are not being impacted in any way. Uh, the neighbor to the north is on side and has uh, written a letter to uh, support us and the house is a stylized um, transitional home. You can see here, this is the, the south facade, uh, which faces onto Joycey that our eaves are only about eight to 10 inches above the eaves of the older home built probably in the 50s or 60s to the west on the left side. If you can go to the long elevation, that would be the Harley side or East elevation, please. So we've created banding to again um, give it a transitional design. There is a continuous uh, sill band under the second floor windows, creates a little more horizontality, um, interrupted by the very vertical uh, chimney, of course. But we've tried to create. Um, horizontality in this project design so that it, again, minimizes um, the impact on the corner because being on a corner, it is seen by all. Um, both streets, Joycey and Harley, are fairly busy streets. Um, my clients are going to have a, a, uh, a north side to the right of this uh, drawing, uh, backyard for their children to play in and safely off the road. And I'd be happy to answer any questions uh, that you might have. Thank you. Any Thank question? You. Any question? No? So can I have a motion, please? Uh, Ms. Skind, can you go ahead? Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you very much for your presentation. Um, Considering um, what you described, I'm also very familiar with this neighborhood, and it appears to me that this home um, and the proposal does fit within the neighborhood and is desirable for the um, appropriate development of this type of a property. I believe it does meet the four part test. 
I would approve it with the condition as set out by the staff report dated March 15th, that the property be developed substantially in accordance with the site plan and west side elevation drawings submitted to the committee of adjustment and attached as attachments one and two to the staff report and as well include the conditions as set out by parks and forestry. Thank you. Thank Se you. Second, Mr. Taro D, all in favor? Okay, unanimously approved, subjects to those conditions, okay? Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, and thank you all, and welcome, uh, Ms. Iskin, to the committee. Nice thank to you. see you. Thank you. Hopefully, we'll see you in person in the not too near future. We'll hold you to Indeed, it. thank you very much. <laughs> okay, all the best. Bye. Bye. Okay, it's winning uh, item 29, which is rainy. 303 Rainy Avenue, and that is we have two people and the agent and one uh, speaker, and then we have Mr. Nick Sacconi. Are you there? Yes, yes, I'm here. Hello, how do you pronounce it? Nick Sacconi, you pronounce it Sacconi, 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 okay, Sacconi, Sacconi, okay, yep. so could you and trademark uh, by design? Uh, My address is 103 Glen Long Avenue in Toronto, Ontario, with a postal code N as in Mary, 6, B as in boy, 2, M as in mother, 4. Very good. So you know the drill. Now we have some more, some more speaker here. Therefore, we'll, leave you the five, we'll give you the five minutes to make a short presentation. Okay, thank you. So um, I... I, I was uh, speaking with planning staff on several of occasions. Um, there were two items that um, they had concerns about. One of the items, um, which was number 14, um, in regards to the, the platform of uh, to the second story of 19.16 square meters, uh, we've agreed that uh, if I reduce it to 10 square meters, uh, they'll be okay with that, and we will do that. Uh, so that item will be reduced to 10 square meters. Um, the next item regarding the three-story, which is item number 12, it's it's a technical variance. Um, essentially, if you look on on uh, the, the basement plan where the garage is, so the garage is at grade. Uh, there's a mud room that literally comes off of the back of the garage. If that mud room was at the same level of the basement, then this would be classified as a two-story uh, dwelling. Um, the overall mapping in height would not change. Um, we have a sunken foyer, uh, very typical of a lot of designs. Um, and the first floor uh, above the garage, and since this is a technical three stories, uh, then that's considered floor number two instead of the standard main floor. Also, we looked at just putting some steps from that doorway straight down to the basement. Uh, but my clients, they have uh, kids that, you know, they play hockey and soccer and ballet and just carrying grocery bags up and down the stairs right when you come out of your car. It, it, it would pose, you know, they could stumble, they could fall. It just doesn't make sense just to go straight down just to classify it as a two-story dwelling. Um, so this was the issue that planning essentially couldn't couldn't budge because it would be technically a three story and um and essentially it's all due to that mud room in the back that it doesn't go straight down to the basement level that's it okay now could you please go over and tell me exactly what your what changes are you making are you making any so the changes yeah yeah so the changes as per as long, uh, outlined in the planning report was that uh, the second, the second floor second. plot, the second story platform? Excuse me, hold on a second. The variances we have in front of us here, are they already changed, or do you want to change some from them? 
no, no, they're not changed. Okay. But if you refer to the planning, planning, uh, um, I guess, uh, memo, Step planning forward. comments, yes. they, one of the items on that is that if, if, if I don't reduce item number 14 or the one that states the permitted maximum area of each platform at or above the second story of a detached home is four meters squared. The proposed area of the second story rear platform is 19.16. We agreed that uh, 10 square meters uh, would be okay, and that's what we're going to change it to is 10 so square one. meters. Now the uh, the fact they uh, the same the same memo you call it memo the staff report they uh, asking for uh, variance number twelve to be um, uh, to be refused but you just explain that is technical is that your 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 answer correct okay correct yeah so yes if 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 you look at the elevation drawing you will see there's there's yeah, yeah. There's the front door, which is sunken. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You guys understand. That. Okay. So we'll uh, we'll get the other person. See what happened. We have here, uh, Eloisa. Yeah, Eloisa Rivera. Are you there? Eloisa Rivera. Oh. Okay. Yeah, we have to wait for a few seconds to get the uh, system on. No problem. Uh, Luisa Rivera, see if she's on. She on? Yeah. Uh, I am here. Okay, so could you please state your name and address? I, my name is Eloisa Rivera. I re represent the owner of 310 Rainy Avenue. I'm just here to observe and listen to the Committee of Adjustment meeting. Okay, so you don't have much to say, right? I don't have much okay. to say. All right, that's, that's very, uh, that's very big presentation. Thank you. Thank you, okay. Thank you so much. Okay, Mr. Uh, Mr. Sacconi, could you, could you come back, please? Hello. Yes, I'm here. Okay. So, any questions to? Uh, I guess you don't have to answer to the lady who just uh, observing. <laughs> she made it easy. She's just made observing. It easy. Okay. Uh, Miss yeah. Miss Sankar. Uh, sorry, my, my family name is Atarodi West. Sankar went to the other panel. Um. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Atarodi. <laughs> It's it's okay. I've just yeah. I've just it's gonna, if, it's gonna take a few sessions before we get used to it. That's okay. So I just would like to ask an explanation regarding the uh building height uh variance the, there's there are two variances, number eighteen and uh, um uh, ten. Yes. So, so, uh, so both the, uh, ten and eighteen are, are are similar, but their height is measured different between between the two. Um, so, uh, we go in number ten, point uh, eleven meters over, which is the true height of 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 the home. I'm point eleven is, I believe, four inches. Four inches, um, which I, I, I believe is extremely minor, and just due to the the, the sloping, and 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 how height is measured in in variance number number eighteen, the permitted building height is much lower. It's down to eight meters opposed to the ten meters. Um, again, our, our ceiling heights are not. Uh, Large. They're they're ten foot clear on the main, and about nine foot up up on the second floor. So uh, the reason for the taller height is because we got to get over the garage. Uh, that garage area, I believe, has a total height from from the driveway up to the second floor about nine 
nine nine feet nine foot two. That's where our our, our first floor is, floor or sorry our main floor begins because we've got to get up over the garage. So with with a relatively flat grading around the property, um, we can't take advantage of the the different types of grades. So so it it basically pushes us up just due to the fact that we have a garage on grade and not below grade garage. Okay, any other question? Ms. Ataroji, any other question? Okay, uh, if not, can I have a motion please? Mr. Klassen? Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, it was good to get some uh, of the details here. So uh, I'd like to move to approve this applic application. It is minor. It does meet the four tests with uh, variance number 14 change to 10 square meters and also subject to urban forestry. Uh, second, Ms. Skin, all in favor? Okay. Okay, your application is unanimously approved, subject to those conditions. Thank you very much. Have a, okay. have a good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Item number three, which is 1448. Lawrence Avenue East, and we have here just one person registered, who's the agent, Adrian Litovsky. Uh, thank you, sir. This is Adrian Litovsky here. However, um, there may be a bit of confusion. Um, I have Miss Madviva from my office who had registered to speak. I am here really uh, as an observer. I can, of course, if there are technical issues that are preventing this from happening, I can give the presentation, but Ms. Madviva from my office is also ready to give the presentation. Okay, so uh, are you either, able to get her? Okay, yeah, sure. Either you or Ms. Nativa, but if you decide to to speak both of you, you, have, you can share the five minutes. So Ms. Nativa, are you there? I, I, if she's available, I'll turn over the table to her. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Ms. Nativa, are you there? I am. Can you hear me? Yes. Could you please state your name and address? Of course. Uh, my name is Stephanie Matviva. I'm a senior planner with Johnson Matowski. The address is 235 Lakeshore Road East, Suite 202 in Oakville. Postal code is L6J1H7. Thank you. Just hold on. We have here uh, is a co commercial structure with four variances. There is nothing else, no report whatsoever. Uh, staff, do we, uh, my members, do we need any presentation? No. Mr. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Bartolo. Uh, yeah, thanks, Mr. Chair. I'd uh, appreciate a quick presentation, please. Thank you. Okay, so, Mr. Mendeziva, could you please give us a, a small presentation? I'll give you the usual five minutes and tell us what the merits of your application is. Of course, if I could just ask for the supplemental presentation to be pulled up. Thank you very much. So I'll just start by saying um, this application encompasses Victoria Terrace, which is an existing commercial plaza. Our application is for a new commercial structure within one small quadrant of the overall site. If I could ask for the ne next slide. Thank you. So there is existing structures on the site. There is a total of three existing buildings. Uh, the images that you see on screen here, the immediate structure in the distance there is considered pad three, which is in another commercial structure. Beyond is building two and to the right, if you can, next page, please. Is a further, existing structures. So in the on the 
slide that's currently indicated there. Our proposal is for the area that is immediately adjacent to that existing sign. Um, it has frontage on Lawrence Avenue East. In total, the proposed structure is for 261 square meters. We have outlined the various reasons why we feel this application is appropriate and meets the four tests in our cover letter. The only thing that I wish to highlight, our application seeks very minor modifications to existing permissions. And part of the reason for these requested revisions is to reflect modifications to existing tenants, as well as consumer behaviors that have occurred over time since the 1980s when this uh, this particular development was first implemented and when the site specific bylaw was adopted. I'm happy to answer any questions that may arise. Thank you. Any question? Okay. If not, can I have a motion, please? Mr. Bartolo. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, yeah, I accept the uh, reasoning and uh, explanation uh, made by the applicant there. Uh, therefore, I will uh, put forward a motion uh, to approve this application uh, as is. No condition. Second. No. Second. Ms. Siskin, all in, all in favor? Okay, unanimously approved. Okay, there's no condition. Thank you very much. Have a great long weekend. You too. Next one is 31, which is 138 Mona Drive. And we have one person here only, the uh, agent. Mr. Chair, if I may, we've had a request uh, by uh, Mr. Rob Inkster to make a deputation with respect to this application. Instead of uh, Franco Romano? No, no, no. In addition, he would... Oh, he yes. wishes to make a deputation with respect to this. Franco Romano. Yes. Okay. All right. So we. So then we have. We need uh, Mr. Romano to do a, uh, a presentation. Mr. Romano, are you there? Yes, sir. I'm here. Thank you. Okay. Franco Romano, 2095 yeah, Autumn Breeze Drive South, Port Credit. Thank you. We just had one more person uh, want to register to speak. So please go ahead and make us a small presentation. <laughs> Certainly, sir. I'd like to refer to the uh, presentation slide that I had submitted. It shows the site plan, front elevation, and a photograph. Once that's, once that's up, I'll start to, to speak to it. <clears throat> Thank you kindly. So the property is located on the west side of uh, Mona Drive. It's 138 Mona Drive, and the proposal is to construct a new two-story detached dwelling with a one-story bump-out addition at the rear. And you'll see in the upper left, there's a photograph of the subject site. And to the uh, south and north, there are two-story dwellings, which are a little larger than what the subject site is uh, with its current detached dwelling. Uh, 140 Mona Drive to the north is actually a uh, at an approved minor variance floor space index of 0 0.65, a north side yard setback portion of 1.22 meters. Otherwise, the proposed dwelling is fully within the building envelope that is permitted. It's actually smaller. It has a second story uh, length and depth of 13.23 meters to, and a first floor length of up to 15.54 meters. It occupies a reasonable amount of the property with substantial uh, setbacks and landscaping around the perimeter. And the two variances are in line with not only the uh, adjacent dwellings, which have floor space indices, which are similar, but also along Mona and the neighboring uh, surrounding uh, neighborhood context where dwellings of two stories and even up to three stories with floor space indices uh, in the excess of 0 0.7, finding themselves on Mona Drive, as well as the adjoining road network. So the proposed height here is less than the main wall height that's permitted under the zoning bylaw and less than the overall height that's permitted under the zoning bylaw. So this is a sensitive, appropriate design, and you'll see that it lines up well with 
neighboring dwellings, including the two story to the south, which is a full two stories that is longer than what is being proposed, and the two story to the north, which is similarly designed and has a floor space index, which is very comparable at 0 0.65. So, subject to any questions, sir, I submit that the variances, the two variances that are being sought are minor in nature and create no unacceptable adverse impact. Okay, we'll uh, we'll get to the, we'll get you back. Uh, is the six point six six seven? Does it include the basement, the FSI? No. No. So first and second floor. Okay, thank you. All right, so we have the next one. What's his name? Who's there? We have a new a new speaker, right? R right, Mr. Rob Ingster. Rob Ingster. Yep. Hi. Okay. Mr. Can you hear me? Yeah, we hear you. Could you please state your name and address? Oh. Okay, my name is Rob Inkster. I live at 140 Mona Drive. Okay. Um, I guess my, I guess my primary concern is um, I know that uh, the variances are creeping up, and and ours is relatively the same. Um, my my issues uh, are twofold. One is the bump out at the back. Um, it uh, it stands out from our backyard. It's going to block and cause some problems there like we're going to be staring at their back wall on that one story bump out um, because it is quite high it's about a 10 10 story or 10 foot uh, ceilings i'm assuming and uh, the other thing i'm seeing is the trend that everybody's got a, a walkout coming out on top and they're just going to be towering over our backyard um, and again that kind of impacts the uh, the quality of our life in the backyard um, with them peering down at us. Um, the other problem we kind of have is a, a drainage issue. And I worry about where the water is going to be drained back there. Because um, at this point in time, uh, like any regular rain, we're getting our sump yeah. pumps just kicking in all the time. I don't like and, to, inter uh, I don't like to interrupt you, sir. I don't like to interrupt you, but this committee does not deal with the drains. That's they will have to deal with it at the time of the permit and the construction. Okay. Okay, well, as far as the variance goes, I mean, if they were the same as ours, that's fine. But again, I'm worried about this drainage problem and like, okay. I know it's probably going to get passed through, but I just kind of want my concern to be deset here and uh, maybe, maybe if they could build the back bump out on the south side where the other house uh, at 136 has their bump out. Um, maybe it can go halfway or something like that, but uh, I just kind of don't want it sticking out beyond into our backyard, really. Okay. Any any question? Okay, so we'll have the <coughs> agent come back. Mr. Romano, could you please come back and uh, address those issues? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So that uh, that bump out is fully within the, uh, it's actually 1.52 meter side yard setback, and it's less than the two story height that's permitted there. It's only a one story. And the balcony that's off of the second story is actually on the other side. So it is on the south side and does not uh, trigger a variance. So it's less than the four square meters. Grading and drainage is something that gets uh, approved at the building permit stage, and that is required to be maintained and handled fully on site. So there shouldn't be any issues uh, with with that. And again, there's there's a <clears throat> the the north side yard setback right right now for the existing dwelling is smaller than what is being proposed. So there's more space being provided for on that. Uh, on, on the side of the lot next to number 140. So I don't believe that there, and there's no windows on that one story bump out. So there's no, no overlook privacy or some shade issues or what, what not. So subject to any questions, sir, I submit that the two variances are respectful of the neighborhood and create no unacceptable adverse impact. Thank you. Any questions? If not, if not, can I have a motion, please? Mrs. Kent, yeah. Please Thank go. you, Mr. Chair. Thank I you. I appreciate uh, both the presentations, and um, I do believe that what is being proposed really is minor um, in nature, and definitely this qualifies as as minor variances. I also 
believe that this proposal is desirable for the development of that neighborhood and fits into the style of homes and size of homes and is very respectful of the existing neighborhood. It also conforms to the general intent and purpose of the bylaw and city's official plan. I would just add a condition um, that were outlined by um, Parks and Forestry, and otherwise I move to approve this application. Thank you. Second. Mr. Bartolo, all in favor? Okay, your application is unanimously approved, subject to just the forestry, okay? Much appreciated, thank you kindly. Okay. Item 32, which is uh, 32 <laughs> Dexter. Uh, item 32, 32 Dexter Boulevard. Uh, we have here one, uh, Meron, uh, King Juan Leo. King Juan Leo, are you there? Yes. Okay, can you please state your name and address? Uh, my name is Qing Juan Liu. My address is 32 Text Boulevard. Oh. And actually, I'm the owner of the house. Okay, good. Your owner. Okay, so um, uh, just a second. We have here one story. The rear side of the ear and side, one variance. Uh, do we need a presentation? No? Okay, uh, I don't see a request for a presentation. Uh, do you want to say something else or we just go to the committee for a decision? You talking to me? Do you want to, do you want to tell us something? You want to explain something uh, or we no. just- No. Okay. Okay, you just what you're asking for is the one variance and uh, we'll ask the committee. Uh, can I have uh, any question or motion, please? Mr. Tarodi? Um, no question and to you, Mr. Chair, I would like to put forward a motion to approve this application with the no condition. It's very straightforward. Thank you. Second, Mrs. Kind, all in favor? Okay, your application is unanimously approved and there is no condition. Thank you very much. Okay, number 33. Item 33, which is uh, 9 Heather Street. 9 Heather Street. Yes. Okay, so we have the agent here. Uh, Sarvena, Sarvena's. Nazim, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Hello again. Um, I presented another project in the morning. Okay, so um, we still need your name and address recorded on every absolutely. application. Sure, so my name is Sarvan Nazim. My address is 16 Bramer Avenue, Toronto, M5P2L2. Thank you. Okay, we, uh, we have uh, one, two, three. We have four more speakers to speak and therefore we need you to make a presentation and I'll give you the usual five minutes. Sure. So, um, if we refer to the drawings, um, it's a very uh, pretty straightforward application. It's an, um, in, it's an addition, two story addition to an existing uh, two story house. And um, we're applying for. Um, the, the variance number one refers to the floor space index that is um, 78%. And the second variance refers to the site setback that um, is basically the existing setback and the new addition is in line with the existing setback. That's it? Yes. Okay. All right, so we'll... Uh... We'll get you back, and if we have any more questions, we'll come back after we hear, sure. the, we'll hear the other people. David Restivo, sure. are you there? David Restivo. He registered. Mr. Restivo, are you there? If not, we can go to the next one. <laughs> D 
David Restivo. Uh, Mr. Chair, yeah. staff have attempted to reach out to uh, Mr. David Restivo without uh, any luck. Okay, he's gone. Okay. Next is John and Libby Glover. Are you there? Mr. John Glover. What happened to him? He, he's there. Okay. Yeah. John and Libby Glover. Glover, please. Anybody there? John and Libby Glover, are you there? How about the next one? Philip and uh, Philip Rowe and Maureen Rowe, are you there? Mr. or Mrs. Rowe, are you there? Philip or Maureen Rowe, are you there? Okay, next. Ray and Kathy Goodman, are you there? Yes. Yeah. Can you hear us? Yeah. Oh, no. I think you got a Go word. ahead. Yeah, great. Ahead. Could you please state your name, your name and address, please? Uh, Ray and Kathy Goodman, 97 Glen Grove Avenue West. Thank you. Toronto. Now, yeah, who wants to speak? You, you or, uh, or, or uh, Mr. I will. You I are, will. You want to present. Okay, good. Please yeah. go ahead. What's your concern? Thank you. Um, I submitted my thoughts on paper by email. Um, and just to uh, try to encapsulate it, um, we have a laneway at the back of our property. We have a corner property and our neighbor um, to the south is Nine Heather. Um, the laneway has an easement for our neighbor to the right of us, which is 91 Glen Grove Avenue West. But Nine Heather does not have any rights to our laneway. And I want to make sure that it will not be used for this project for the excavation of their basement and their new addition. Um, I am, and the, the reason why I submitted this was because uh, they have unilaterally um, uh, used our curb cut and our property to access their front yard parking. And I didn't say anything, but uh, just trying to be a, a good neighbor, frankly. And um, but I, I'm not happy with further usurping of the property. Okay, uh, are you are you done? Yes, thank you. Okay, now do you have any problem with the variances the way they're listed there? There is no. No, no. So the other staff, unfortunately, I don't think we deal with the uh, with the uh, right of way or somebody parking or other stuff. If this, if they didn't have these variances here, they wouldn't be here. It wouldn't be here. We won't be here. We deal with the variances. Right. So let uh, let him uh, answer the question. Okay. So. Thank you. Okay. Any any question to the speaker? All right, so let's go back to uh, see if John and Libby Glover are here. Or Philip. Who, oh, which one? Okay, Libby Glover, are you there? How about Philip Rowe? Uh, Mr. Chair, staff oh. have reached out to Mr. Philip Rowe, uh, and he's having audio issues, so he's attempting to rejoin. Okay, so Philip Rowe is there. How about uh, John and Libby, uh, Libby Glover? They're not here. Eh? Unsuccessful. Unsuccessful. Yep. Okay. All right, so... Um, yeah, well... Uh, Mr. Philip 
Velepro, are you there? Or Maureen Rowe? Here. Okay. Hello, Philip Rowe is here. Okay, okay. Could you please could you please state your name and address? Certainly. Uh Philip Rowe, eighty eight Glen Karen Avenue, Toronto, M five M four R one and five eight. Thank you. So tell us what's your concern about this application. Uh, it wasn't a concern. It was more from an informational perspective. Um, the package that was mailed out, uh, because of the configuration of the houses, as was indicated by the last presenter, um, these are two houses that are sort of sandwiched between Glen Grove and Glen Cairn, and there was no real perspective given to how it would look or how it matched up from the side to the house at 7 Glen Cairn nor in, in terms of its general area. At least I didn't see it in the package, nor did I see it online. That's the first issue. If we could get some sort of um, uh, perspective from the south and north as to how it will impact the view. And the other thing is there's a large tree, and this may be something that's handled by forestry, I'm not sure. There's a large tree, maple, in the backyard there. We just wanted to make sure it was going to be preserved. That would be our, our only concern. Yeah. Okay, well, you're right about the trees. We don't deal with them here. They, if there is any problem, uh, we usually send it to uh, forestry and they will decide and work with the applicant about the, the trees. We deal with the variance. And so there was no tree even noted on the site plan at all. So that was my concern. Okay, well, let, let, uh, we'll let the applicant uh, respond to that. But as far as the, the uh, trees, uh, we don't deal with them here. Um, Understood. Okay, so any question to this uh, gentleman? Do we still have anybody here or that's it? That's it. Okay, uh, Mr. Uh, no, that's Sarvenas. <laughs> okay, so yeah, <laughs> Sarvenas Nazim, could, could you please, could you please return and ask to uh, answer those questions? Sure. So in regards to uh, the first concern, um, if um, if we look at the basically the rear elevation and the side elevation, which is the south side, um, we can uh, sort of uh, um, see how it will be uh, visual, uh, visually seen from Glen Karen, because Glen Karen is on the south side. And um, it's basically the perspective would be the between the side elevation and the rear elevation. So we, if we look at the page uh, 15 and page set for, for um, 15 and 16 on the drawings, um, that's what is seen from the south side and obviously from the east side which is viewing the rear elevation. And in regards to the tree matter, um, the way we have designed the, the, the house is basically we don't want to touch the roots of the existing tree. That's very valuable for uh, my client as well. And structurally, we won't damage the roots. Um, so this is something that we have considered from the beginning, and that's where we stop the basically the encroachment into the rear yard as well. Okay. All right. Any could put put back the uh, let's put back the members. Can we put back members? Oh, okay. Technology. <laughs> okay. Um, any questions? If no questions, can I have a motion, please? I'm still watching for the hands. Mr. Klassen. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Um, this is minor and it's in keeping with developments uh, in that neighborhood. So I'd like to to move to approve it and make it subject to urban forestry to ensure that 
the trees uh, are protected. Thank you. Second, Mrs. Kind, all in favor? Okay, uh, your application is unanimously approved, <coughs> subject to the forestry condition. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Have a great day, everyone. You too. Item 34, which is 138 Church Avenue. And we have one uh, person agent only. Mehran Hidari, are you there? Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, member of the community. Yes, I'm here. Mehran Hidari, 1090 Daniel 0, Unit 506. Okay, I got it. Okay, okay we got it. We have okay. the, yeah, we have your address. Thank you. Let me just see what the uh, members are saying. We have here um, the new dwelling. Uh, modify number. Okay. Did you see the staff report? They're asking to modify uh, variance number one and six. Yes, I have been working with the staff uh, uh, during this application, and I totally agree with the comments and requests for changing the variances. Yes. You're going to be changing it now. Yeah, num variance number one derived with. I'm going to remove the number one. Excuse me. Uh, what do you what do you do about number one? Drive away with. Yes. Drive away, drive away with. Yes. Yes. We are removing this bias. Could you please speak up? We want to change drive away with to what? I want to remove this variance. Oh, completely remove it. Okay. Remove number one and number six. Six. And the number six, uh, the landscaping changing to 42.08%. 42.08, okay. Any other change? No, there is no change anymore. Okay, all right. Um, there is a condition to uh, to develop a north elevation driveway, uh, drawings and transportation recommends deferral to revise site plan. Okay, now we have a recommendation from the transportation to defer the application. Are you... Uh, are you in uh, on board for deferral or you want us to deal with the application today? Uh, uh, no, I prefer to go to the application today. The reason that they only have concern about the driveway variance that we already removed the variances. Okay, so so please, in, in that case, we'll give you a, um, a five minute uh, uh, presentation and you can st you can give your presentation. Okay, uh, thank you. This is a straightforward application that I've been working with the staff during this uh, application. And uh, so we had uh, a couple uh, submission for site plan and uh, uh, floor plan design. And finally, the planning staff accepted this application with the removal of the driveway and the change the variance for the landscaping. And we had the problem with the zoning notice at the beginning and after revising the zoning notice, this is the final number that in front of you. And we have the minor uh, variance for you know, length is, uh, if you see there is a 17 meter and we have 17.37 meter in the site plan as the corner lot. And we have the landscaping variance because we don't have the access from the willow there and the front, the front of the street, and we only have the variance uh, of the landscaping on the side just because of the access and uh, from the church avenue that is matched with the neighborhood character, and also we have the bus station at, in front of the building and the villa there, and for this reason we keep everything green in that area, and we have the site plan, revised site plan that is in front of you right now, and we are okay with the condition of the staff about permeable material on the driveway. And we have the variance for the building height on the old bylaw that is because of the difference between the established grade and the center of the road from the Villadel and also the, the main floor uh, height from 1.9 to 
So uh, there is uh, the, uh, there is the other variance is a minor, and if you have any question, I'm more than happy to answer. Okay. Well, that seems okay. to be straight. You uh, you remove number one, which uh, satisfies the transportation, and um, and the um, the number six, you changed it as you mentioned to the uh, staff to forty two point zero eight. And uh, Mr. Chair, can I just clarify? He said variant six. Who's speaking? Uh, it's Simon. Oh, Simon, are you there? I'm here. Gee. He said very, he's changing variant well, six. First was Dan and then Simon. Uh, he's, he's removing variance number one and changing variance number six to 42.08. Is exactly as he mentioned to the staff re, uh, when they made the report. You got that? So remove number one, change number six to 42.8.08. Got it? Uh, my variant six <laughs> says something else. I'm sorry? My variant six says something else. What did he say? Are we in 138 Church Avenue? Yes. Yes. My variant six says proposed south side yard setback. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the public, Mr. Chair, sorry, the public notice and numbers and the staff report numbers aren't aren't a little bit different. We're talk, we're, yeah. The, okay. So we're talking here about uh, about uh, to number 34, right? Which is Madden. So 34, it said their staff report changing number one. I mean, removing number one and changing number six. So what's the question? Huh? What's the question? Um, there, it's no question. On the notice that have been circulated, uh, the number six of the planning staff is number seven of the public notice. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Yeah, we, we dealt with. Okay. Very good. All right. I think so. That's... Mr. Chair, he needs he needs to refer to the public notice numbering, please. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's number number seven. Huh? Okay. All right. Any other any other change? No more change. Okay. So, any question? No question? Can I have a motion, please? Ms. Satarodi? Yes, three, Mr. Chair, I would like to put forward the motion to approve this application uh, with the following uh, changes. Uh -huh. Variance number one regarding the proposal driving width have been eliminated. Variance number um, seven. seven. Yeah, variance number seven regarding the proposed start year landscaping now is 42.08%. And um, I'm not sure if we should tie it to transportation because he already removed uh, variance number one. But should I should I tie it anyways? That's correct. No, That's it's, correct. he changed it. Okay, then that will be my motion. Thank you. Um, Do I have a? Uh, I wonder. I wonder if uh, I can make a friendly uh, amendment. Okay. Based on one of the staff recommendations that the proposed driveway be constructed with uh, permeable materials? Um, yes, I I just adopted and also will add the, the first one, which the proposal be developed substantially accordance with the South North elevation drawing submitted to committee March 17, attachment one, one and two. Thank you for reminding me. Yes, oh, I... thank you. Okay. I'll, okay, so do I have a second? Mr. Klassen, are you saying? Oh, Mr. Mr. Klassen, did you see, did you saw notice that you uh, seconded that, right? Okay, all in favor? Okay, so your application is approved based on those conditions. Okay, 
Thank you so much. Have a good day. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, I wonder if we could take uh, a little recess at this time. Okay, uh, 10 minutes break and we'll be back. Thank you.
I think number 35, yeah? yeah? Okay, we're back. But I see only one person there. We'll wait for the other ones. Oh, now it's Simon, Simon there. Yeah, I didn't know that. Okay, are we all here? No? Yeah, we still need two. We are half. No, no, N not this time. All right, we're resuming the session here, and we're in item number 35, which is 2365 Bayview East. 2365 Bayview Avenue East. And we have here one person registered, who is the agent, Ali Yi. Are you there? Sorry, this is, can you sorry, hear me? This is Adam sorry, Shipwick. Sorry. sorry, sorry, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Borden Ladner, are you there? Good afternoon. Okay. Yes, good, good afternoon. My name is Adam Shipwick. I'm an urban planner with BLG. I'm the agent representing Crescent School for this matter. Okay. Uh, my address is 22 Adelaide Street West, M5H4E3. Uh, together with me is uh, Philip O'Sullivan, a senior architect with Perkins and Will. His address is 110 Young Street, M5C1T4. Thank you for the information. Now, your two people there, who's going to make the presentation? Which one? Adam, Adam Shipwick will be. Thank you. Okay. And uh, we have here, this is for the uh, uh, support of uh, beams for, to accommodate the structure. And... Uh, we have a staff report and we have TRC report and heritage. Okay, so uh, maybe you can give us, you're the only one listed here, but we need a, a small presentation to know what this is all about, okay? So we have five minutes. Sure. Give us a small presentation, please. Okay, so the um, application being sought today aims to facilitate the improvement of an existing athletic field by making it accessible year round. To achieve this, Crescent School is applying for a minor variance that will facilitate the installation of support beams to accommodate a seasonal air-supported structure or a dome. The property is subject to site-specific bylaw 22010, which has the effect of permitting the school and establishes conditions related to the maintenance of a delineated landscaped area. A variant is required to permit a minor encroachment of the proposed seasonal air supported structure on the deline delineated landscaped area. Um, from a planning perspective, a number of important goals will be accomplished through the approval of the requested minor variants. The seasonal structure represents an appropriate addition to the Crescent School campus. The seasonal structure is permitted under the official plan and zoning and is consistent with the general intent and purpose of each. The minor variance requested for the encroachment on the landscaped area is appropriate, desirable, and minor in nature. The seasonal structure will pose no adverse effect on the surrounding area as it will be located on the existing athletic field, occupying space already intended for that same purpose. The activities taking place within the seasonal structure will be wholly enclosed. Little physical change to the athletic fields are anticipated. Further to this, the proposed seasonal structure is for temporary use in the fall and winter months, beyond which time the athletic fields will return to their open air state. The seasonal structure will allow for athletics to continue year round, contributing to a healthier and enhanced ed educational experience for the students um, and uh, contributing to the achievement of the planned function of the subject property. Um, as mentioned, we have received comments from, the, from Community Planning, Heritage Planning and Toronto Region Conservation Authority all of which have stated they have no objection. Okay, that's it? That's it. Okay, so 
the staff report has a condition, you're okay with it. The encroachment supposed to be above ground. Is that okay? The, the, we are, we're okay with the condition um, that states that there, uh, the, uh, that it be consistent with the um, state plan drawing. Right, okay. All right, any question? No? Can I have a motion then? Mr. Bartolo? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, yeah, I, I accept uh, the proposal presented by uh, the applicant here today. This is very minor in nature. The encroachment is just for a very small corner of the air supported structure. Um, so I'm going to put forward a motion to approve this application subject to the uh, one condition uh, noted in the staff report. Thank you. Uh, second. Ms. Before we move to the second, I'd like just a, a friendly amendment to that. There was also a staff report um, from Heritage Planning, Urban Design, and City Planning about um, condition relating to an archaeologist consultant ahead of time. Um, and this is set out in the report of March 24th, 2021. I would add that those conditions as set out in that report also be added. It's a pretty heavy condition for an air supported structure. Uh, <laughs> to the uh, to the app, how deep is your grade beam? Um, app, sorry, I forgot the applicant's name. Uh, it's it's Adam. Um, the 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 effect of the actual um, construction will be the circumference line that you can see on the site plan drawings, yeah. but it, it is um it is not uh, very deep or wide, um, it, and it does not uh, affect the the center portion of the actual athletic field itself. Um, my, uh, the architect with me uh, it might be able to describe um, the actual depth itself, um, but I believe it to be approximately 36 inches deep. Uh, okay, so, I, I understand. Like, the, the grade beams are, are fairly, like, to be honest, just to put in the sports field, they dig deeper than 36 inches just to put in the athletic surfacing, I yeah. would think. Okay. Um, the, the beam itself so, drawings that I have in front of me uh, indicate a, a total depth of the beam itself of 36 um, inches, um, and then also an, an anchor screw that would be attached to those. Right. Okay. And while, while I, I understand uh, um, Ms. Siskin's um, request there, I, just, I think it's a little onerous to do a full archaeological assessment for a 36-inch uh, excavation for a little grade beam. So. I'd like to not include that uh, okay. in my. Uh, yeah. So that's fair. I, I will withdraw that. I, okay. I I agree with the thirty-six inches. I agree that it was would not be necessary. Okay. So the original, uh, in, uh, no, uh, the original uh, you have there just a, uh, the uh, staff report. And do I have a second? Second, Mrs. Kane. Second, all in favor. Opposed? Oh no. Okay. Unanimously approved uh, your uh, application subject to that condition of the staff. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Now we have number 20, 26, 26, which is 20, uh, 36, which is 26 Irvington Crescent, item 36. And the address is 26 Irvington Crescent. And we have one agent here, Mr. Ali Yi. Are you there? Miss, Miss Ali Yi. Ali Yi, are you there? Here. Okay. Can you please state your name and address? My name is uh, Ali Yi. Address is 245 French Avenue West, Toronto, Ontario. M2R1M8. Thank you. So let's see here what's going on. We have here, um, yeah, we have uh, a new dwelling with 12 variances. Uh, we have a staff report that asking to make some changes and transportation uh, asking for deferral. Did you see the transportation then asking to defer the application? Uh, 
Yeah, I saw that one, but, but and, I will delay that item. So you're not you're not in favor of the uh, de of deferring it, right? No, not a deferring. I want a decision today. You want to make it today? Okay, so please go ahead, make a presentation, and we'll uh, we'll give you five minutes. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, this uh, is a new project uh, for demolition old house and build one single family house. According to the city staff report, we agree to delete the item number four, that is by transportation request, and also delete number five, and uh, revise the number six from the rear deck the protection from uh, 3.27 meter change it to 2.88 meter. Exactly according to the city staff report request. Uh, the rest request that I did a uh, investigation research for for the approved uh, committee adjustment uh, decision. I think in similar application in the neighborhood, these are all approved by committee adjustment. I think in the rest of the require will be minor indeed and meet full test requires. I hope I can get it approved by chain and the committee adjustment members. Thank you very much. Okay, any uh, any question, Mr. Bartolo? Uh, yeah, through you, Mr. Chair, I'm I'm just not, I, I thought I heard some changes to the application. I'm just not clear how, if and what they are. Oh, okay, can you, can you please go to the uh, changes you're making and speak slowly? Okay. According city staff require, they want us to delete the number item number four, five, and revise the number six. So we agree for that one. We we delete their require for number four, number five, and revise the item number six for rear deck from. 3.27 meter, reduce it uh, to 2.88 meter. Okay, so that that's what you're decided with the uh, with the staff that you're removing four and five. Uh, yes. Four and five uh, be eliminated, and number six will be changed from 327 to 2.88 meter. Yes. That yeah, that's what it said in the staff report. And then there is a condition uh, to uh, build per east and east and west elevation. Any other question, Ms. Sataro? Yes, yes to you, Mr. Chair. The transportation um, also uh, have concern regarding the variance number three, which is the parking space width. Yes. Um, yeah. Uh, can can she can your present presenter explain and see if if, he, if there is any modification or they will keep it? Yeah. Uh, uh, did, did you hear the question? Uh, did you hear the question regarding the parking? The variance regarding the parking. Are you leaving it as is, or you want to do some changes there? Okay. You, you want me to answer the question? Yes, please. Okay, I can de de delay this uh, requires the two. I can make a uh, driveway bigger. No, she wants to leave it as is. So, any any other question or make a, make a motion? Mr. Chair. Yes. Mr. Chair. Yes. Can you have her? Can you have her repeat that, please? Oh. It's, um, it sounded like she was going to delete it, um, but I'm not totally sure. Okay. Do you want me to repeat uh, again? Yes, yes, repeat the question. Okay, this uh, uh, item number five, 
we can re remove this required tool. Number number at uh, item three. Make a no, driveway bigger as a transportation request. Mr. Chair, three you. Can I just confirm the applicant is removing variance three? Yeah, you, we can you, remove item number three. Oh, you're removing it. Okay. Removing application uh, variance number three. So, in other words, you're removing number three, four, and five. Yes. Okay. Any other question? Can I have a motion, please? Mr. Tarodi? Ms. Tarodi, you're on. Through you, Mr. Chair, I would like to put forward a motion to approve this application with a, a modification that the applicant um, mentioned, including the uh, eliminating variance number three, variance number four, variance number five, and modifying variance number six to read that the proposed rear deck is located 2.88 meters from the rear main wall, and it's 2.10 meters above the ground, if it's correct. And, um, and then also want to attach the condition of the staff, which the proposal be developed substantially according to the east and west elevation drawings submitted to the city, attachment of one and two, and subjected to urban forestry. Thank you. Second. Ms. Siskin, all in favor? Okay, your application is approved, subject to those conditions and the changes you made. Three, four, and five are gone, and change you made to the uh, six and the uh, conditions, okay? Thank you very much. Okay. Item 37, which is 391 Whitmore Avenue. And we have here uh, just one, one applicant, one speaker. Andrew Trotter, are you there? Yes, uh, I'm Andrew Trotter, I'm Asian designer, 81 St. Clarence Avenue, M6K2S6. Okay, and um, we have here uh, 37. We have uh, okay, third story, two story variance staff report. You, uh, as far as the staff report, they said that you indicated revisions to variances four, to is one and five, and eliminate. Yeah, one. Yes. okay. Can yeah, you... we reduced the, the height to comply to the building height, which is. I'd like you to mention it. 11 meters, 11 meters. We, we were at 11.5 and we brought the roof down to 11 meters. Okay, changing it Mr. to 11 meters. Mr. Chair, yes. Mr. Chair, can, can the applicant reference the variance number and then the changes, please? Oh, uh, it would be, um, sorry. Um, number one. The, on the, the, um, it would be one on the notice and uh, item number five, item number one and item number five yes. on the notice. Yeah. Has, that's been eliminated. Yeah. So the number one, you're making a revision to it to 11 meter, you said, right? Yes, we have. We, we've sent the drawings already to uh, planning and uh, they're, they're now, so there, there's no variance anymore for one and five. Okay, so so you want to eliminate one and five, right? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Any other change? No. The two, number three and four are existing variances. Uh, that's just the shape of the house um, below. 
uh, the addition. And then the number two is uh, at one, uh, the FSI is at one. Okay, so you're not- That's changing. really the only variance is changed. That's the only real change. All you're doing is eliminating uh, one and five. Okay. Any, yeah, any, yeah. any question? Any question? No, can I have a motion please? Mr. Bartolo. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, this seems like a pretty straightforward application, especially given the existing condition um, um, with reference to variances three and four. So I will put forward a motion to approve this application subject to the following changes that number uh, variance number one and variance number five be removed. That's it. Thank you. Second. That's it. Mr. Klassen, all in favor? Okay, so your application is approved based on those changes you made, okay? Thank you very much. Have a nice weekend. Okay, now next is uh, number 38, uh, which is 15, Barbary Place, and the item is 38. We have just one speaker here, Frank. Garduli? Frank Garduli, are you there? Yes. Okay, can you please, yes. can you please state your name and address? Uh, it's Frank Garduli, 97 Ceramia Crescent, unit number one, Concord, Ontario, uh, L4K for P7. Okay, this is for the storage underground. And uh, again, the, the transportation was recommending deferral do you want to defer it or you want to still deal with it today? I'd like to deal with it today if we could, please. Okay, so in that case, give us a small presentation and for five minutes, tell us what uh, was the concern and uh, how do you respond to the uh, transportation? So uh, our client is a, a senior living uh, residential building. Uh, the proposed plan is for a uh, parking uh, an underground storage room and in the underground parking garage, uh, which would impede on two of the allocated parking spaces for the building. So the building has uh, 58 allotted spaces based on the units in the building. Uh, it would decrease that to 56 spaces. Uh, and there are currently, uh, of the 58 available spaces, there's only 14 actually being used hmm. at the time. Uh, and the proposed storage room is actually for a uh, uh, primarily for COVID uh, PPE for their staff, uh, residents, and visitors to the building. So the whole application is just the reduction of two parking spaces. That's it. That's correct. Okay. Any question? Or can I have a motion, please? Mr. Klassen? Yes, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, it does seem that there are unused parking spots, so it is reasonable to use them in a different way. So I'd like to move to approve this application. Thank you. Second. Ms. Siskind, all in favor? Okay, your application is unanimously approved. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman and committee members. Have a great weekend. Item 39, which is 117 Hillmount Avenue. And we have here the agent was, was registered. Then we have one more speaker, which means three altogether. Parisa Amiri, are you there? <coughs> yes, hi. Um, Could you please? This is Paris. I'm here. I'm yes. I'm the architect um, on this file, and I'm um, the principal of our architects, 50 Woodville Avenue, Toronto, Ontario, M4K 2J6. <laughs> Thank you. We have few more people here to speak. Therefore, we need you to make a presentation. Sure. Can I have the uh, site plan on? And uh, technically, with this uh, application, we are requesting for. Uh, site setback variance and um, 
uh, height under the old bylaw. Under the new bylaw, you're okay. And under the uh, old bylaw, you are requesting for the uh, height. Uh, site setback, uh, instead of 1.8 meter, we are requesting for 1.22 for both sides. And uh, also continue to the uh, proposed deck at the back as well. And um, the this is a new house, two-story new house. We don't uh, have any other uh, variances, and uh, it complies with the lock coverage and uh, height, um, length, so, uh, all this, the front and back setbacks. And uh, I, actually, we were contemplating to add a renovation on half a renovation and uh, um, have a major renovation on this uh, application, but. Um, some, somehow the applicant wanted uh, to have a new one. With that, uh, with that uh, application, if we wanted to move forward with the uh, major renovation, the setback was very um, shorter because the existing setback is uh, 58 centimeter uh, both sides. And we are proposing 1.22. So um, if there is any question, um, I'm happy to answer, and I want to mention that we have four uh, layers of support from neighbors, and uh, we have a discussion from the other neighbor, which is the West neighbor, and uh, she was in concern with the privacy for the pool that we are proposing at the back, and the uh, client uh, is willing to um, plant a cedar along the uh, back uh, lot line and the west light line to have the privacy both for himself and his family and the neighbors. And already there is a cedar along the uh, east side. Okay. Um, we'll get you back after we hear the other people, okay? Sure. We have here um, Jill Rosen, are you there? Uh, Mr. Chair? Yes. Uh, Ms. Rosen has withdrawn her request to participate. Okay. So we have the other one, uh, Jenny, Jenny uh, Nathanson, the last one who, who came. Uh, Jenny Nathanson, are you there? WHO is, yeah. Okay, can, can you please state your name and address? Jenny Nathanson. Could you please state? Oh. Could you state your name and address, please? Hi, uh, Jenny Nathanson, and I'm at 119 Hillmount Avenue. Okay. Uh, next, right next door to the project. Okay. So tell us, please, what's your concern? And you heard the uh, so, presentation from the from the agent. So tell us what's your concern. So one of my concerns was about fire shutters on the west side, but I understand that because their variance will put them at four feet from the property line, that they don't have to put fire shutters on those windows, which will butt up against our bedroom windows. Uh, but my main concern really is I have a probably 50 or more year old tree in the backyard. Uh, that is probably around three feet from the property line. And I just want to make sure that the tree is not damaged. Uh, the roots of the trees are not damaged with the digging of the pool and the cement bed that's going around the pool. Um, okay. So this, that's really my big concern. Okay. This is a, a thing that will be addressed by the uh, forestry. Definitely they okay. look at it and when we make a decision, we make it subject to forestry, we'll be looking at that uh, question. Okay? okay? And yes, and my other concern, and I've backed and forth with email with the uh, owners of the property, is really just uh, privacy from their pool, because right now we only have a five foot tall uh, wooden fence, standard wooden garden fence. Um, so we're just looking for privacy from their pool as well. Okay, well, We'll, we'll bring the agent back and uh, to address the uh, your questions. And in the meantime, any question for this uh, speaker? If not, that's the only speaker we have. Uh, 
Parisa Amiri, could you please come back and address the concerns? Yes. Yes. Um, uh, as I explained uh, in my presentation, the owner uh, is uh, actually is planning to plant a cedar along the uh, West Life lot line to have the both privacy for the neighbor and himself. And in terms of the um, in terms of the uh, urban forestry, uh, we are working with the urban forestry for the tree clearance, and uh, actually we got the permit for the pool already. So uh, we we are aware of that to that we need to uh, protect the tree because we have another tree in our backyard as well. So um, everything has been addressed prior to the meeting. Okay, so you'll be working with forestry about the trees. Um, any, yes. Any question with this uh, for this uh, applicant? If there is no question, can I have a motion, please? Ms. Siskin? Thank you, Mr. Chair. It sounds like um, the variances requested for this proposal are minor in nature and they do meet uh, all the, of the four tests um, you know with the one concern raised by the neighbor um, which is valid about the privacy it sounds like it actually has been addressed by the owner by the planting of the cedar trees so i don't have a concern with um you know with the impact on the neighbor so so long as this approval is conditional on uh, working with forestry and the conditions imposed by urban forestry, I recommend that we approve this application. Thank you, subject to forestry. And uh, any, uh, uh, can I have a second, please? Mr. Klassen, second, all in favor? Okay, your application unanimously approved, subject to forestry. Item 40, which is 56, Corwin Crescent, item number 40, and we have just one person registered who's the agent, Ali Asakendi. Are, can you there? Hi, uh, yes, I'm here. Good afternoon. This is Ali Asakendi from AGA Architectural and Engineering. The address is at 305 16th Avenue, Richmond Hill. L4C786. Thank you. Okay, so that's we, this is a new uh, dwelling. Uh, the staff report is um, is asking that revisions you made them. You have you made certain revisions. So could you please give us a small presentation and cover the changes that you're making, and please go one variance part with the other and say exactly what you're doing in them. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Um, further to our communication with the planning staff, and based on their comments on the drawings, we made some modification on the drawings to modify and moderate the requested variances. So I'm gonna go through the variances one by one and describe it. Okay, variance number one. Oh, is with I, I, think, I, I think you're fading there, we don't hear you. Could you please speak to the microphone? Yeah, yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, better, okay. All right, okay, I'm gonna go through the requested variances. First of all, the first variance I'm requesting is for the driveway width. Uh, I'm going to remove this variance from my list, so it would no further be there, okay? So number one, remove. Number two is with regards to the lot coverage. Uh, the permitted maximum lot coverage is 30 percent. I initially asked for 38.1 percent. Though based on the comments that uh, planning staff had, I reduced the lot okay. coverage. To uh, excuse me. To, to just to be clear, uh, just give us the number, the number of the variance and the change. Don't give us the background of it. We'll come back later. Just give us the number. You said one is removed. And number yes. two, number two, you're doing what? Reduce that. Reduce proposed lot coverage from 38.1% to 
to 34 percent 34 percent okay next okay number three side yard setback uh, on the north side it was requested for 1.24 meters i increased that to 1.5 meter so the requested variance would be 1.5 meter for the got, north side got it next okay number four number four is also side yard setback uh, originally i requested for 1.24 I revised that to 1.5 meters. Next. Next, number five, I would remove that also. Eliminated, right. So yeah. all this is exactly what this stuff you discussed with. And uh, now. Um, yeah, that's right. And the staff indicated that if we make those changes, this proposal would be in keeping with the requirements and the character of the neighborhood, yes. and they would support it. Yes, I had them and I'll let you do it. Okay, so any other, uh, you want to say something else? You still have time if you want to speak. Or you're done. Do you still want to continue or you're done? No, no, I'm done, thank you. You're done, okay, any questions? Any questions for the speaker? If not, we have the changes here. Uh, we need a motion. Mr. Klassen. Okay, Mr. Chair, uh, I'd like to propose that this be approved subject to the following changes that variance number one be deleted, that variance number two be changed to 34%, variance Number three, be changed to 1.5 meters. Variance number four, be changed to 1.5 meters. And variance, variance number six, be deleted. Mm -hmm. And this will also be subject to urban forestry. Thank you. Okay. Uh, is it number six uh, deleted or? Number five, he means, I believe, like number because five, there's no yeah. item six. It's yeah. not number six, it's number five, yeah. Yes, uh, I apologize. Okay. Uh, it's All number right. five. Okay, that's good. And uh, and you said subject to forestry, right? That's right. Thank you. Can I have a second, please? Mr. Bartolo, second. All in favor? Okay. Your application is approved unanimously subject to forestry and subject to those changes you made. Sure, thank you. Item 41, which is 40 Joyce Parkway. And here we have also just one person. Uh, yeah, one person registered here, the agent. And that is Max Murhaim. Murhasin? Murchasin? Are you there? Yes, almost. Yep. Good afternoon, Could Mr. You Chair. Good repeat afternoon, your name. committee. Repeat your name and address, please. Definitely. My name is Max Murchasin, and I represent the homeowners of 40 Joyce Parkway. Okay. On okay. this application? Yeah, just a second, please. We have the, this is to legalize, no and, legalize and maintain the rear yard deck. And we have yes. four variances and three letters of support. Members, do we need a presentation yes, here? Yes? Ms. Sataro just said yes. Could you please give us a small presentation? Yes, yeah, sure. So, uh, as pretty much you mentioned, we are legalizing an existing deck in the backyard. Uh, due to other applications that will apply to the city so it wasn't bothering anyone uh, this deck is a little bit bigger and higher than what is allowed in the zoning bylaw uh, we got four variances the first one is pretty much in the same line with the existing line of the building then we got variants two and three which are encroachment into the backyard and uh, height Variance number four is pretty much uh, landscaping area that was actually 
uh, agreed upon, the percentage was agreed upon with the planning department. So therefore we don't have a report against the application. Uh, we do have three letters of support from all the neighbors around from the back and the sides that support this application. That's it. Okay, any yes, sir. Any question? All right, so um, if not, can I have a motion, please? Ms. Siskin? This seems like a very straightforward application. It's just legalizing something that exists already. This is certainly would be considered um, minor in nature in terms of a variance. So I move to approve this application. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Ms. Tarodi, all in favor? Okay, your application is unanimously approved. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, committee. Have a good evening and have a great weekend. Item 42, which is 237 Newton Drive, variance 42, I mean, uh, application 42. And, uh, and here we have a, um, we have just, uh, we have the agent and one more speaker. And the agent is Bill Ross. Bill Ross, are you there, please? Mr. Ross, are you there? Yes, Mr. Chairman, can you oh, hear me? Okay, yeah, we hear you. Uh, we know who you are, but we still need you to state it for the record, please. Yeah, my name is Bill Ross. I'm at number nine, Beswick Lane, Uxbridge, Ontario. Thank you. We have uh, one more speaker here. Therefore, we need the we need the presentation. If you only give us a short presentation, I'll give you your five minutes. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we've dealt with staff on this. We have a staff report. Uh, we're going to eliminate item number four and item number five. That that leaves us with three minor variances dealing with the application. Uh, the, the height from the main walls and, and the location of the building for front yard setback is basically due to the slope of the property that's there and, the, and flooding of the existing house. It's been flooded several times, three as far as I know. Uh, quite actually, people with hip waders wandering around inside the house. Uh, so that, that's the reason for our front yard setback. Uh, where it bumps out um, at the front, uh, we think it's a sort of a minor variance because it's a considerable distance away from the uh, the house next door where the bump out is. It's about 31 feet, it's a 60 foot lot, and we're about one feet away from the uh, side property line there. So it really doesn't impact the neighboring up a lot. And as far as the height of the building goes, it's uh, and it's quite minor, and it's based basically on the fact the fact that the lot slopes from side to side, and from front to back. And that that's basically what's caused from the request for the uh, first floor and the uh, front yard setback. Pardon me, the uh, height of the side walls. In both cases, the, the height is only a little bit more than a foot that we're asking for on the walls, and it's um, it's about 0 0.05 of a meter on the first floor. That's it? That's it, no. Okay, so you removed four and five, which is in line with the staff report, as in line with the councillor, who's also was asking to follow the... Uh, the staff report, and um, and we have one more person here, and we'll get you back. Um, here we have Richard Thang and Julie Thang. Are you there? Yes. Okay. Can you please yes. can you yeah, please yeah. say your name and address, please? My name is Richard Thang. Address is 255, 235, Sorry, <laughs> um, Newton. Okay. Uh, you can try. Yeah. New York. So t tell us what's your uh, what's your concern. Yeah, my concern is um, the 
the drilling is completely moved away from the existing um, site, which is very far north, uh, towards the north, okay, of the of the uh, of the yard. My concern is, I have five windows facing the east side, okay. This makes this they they're building uh, like a big wall, just blocking all my house on the east side, and uh, I'm going to you know uh, night not getting the night and sunshine, especially in morning from the east side. I I I I I've been I bought this house you know like more than fifteen years ago. And because of the view, and it's facing the park, um, and there are plenty of night and sun, sunshine. That's the major reason I bought the house. Now they are, they uh, if they are building the house, they I mean they move the house, just blocking the, all the east side of my uh, property, and it's going to be, you know, it's not good for me. Um, um, you know, it's, it's going to be de further depreciate the value of my house. Okay. And that's the, my major concern. Now on the minor variance, um, well, the, the number one is probably the ma major concern, which, um, like what I, what I said just, just now, um, um, and the number two, and the number two is regarding the fun yard setback. I don't see any reason. They plenty of space uh, back down on the south part where the original um, uh, house is, house is right. And uh, and uh, because we don't have sidewalk, okay, and is not necessary to have this setback. I mean, it's very inconvenient for the petition that walk across the, the road, they have to walk on the curb, outside the curb, right? And this not, doesn't sound reasonable, okay? That's for number two. And I don't see any reason why there's a, a setback at all on this one, okay? And, um, that's all. That's all, all the question I, I want to make. Okay. So yeah. So your main uh, your main concern is number two, that has a setback, because the other one, the height seven fifty or seven eighty five. If they change it to seven fifty, you still have the same concern there. Right. Uh, which which one? Sorry, first it again. Well, you uh, the height of the. Yeah, the height, the height of the house. Number one, number one, it said the main the main wall facing a sideline is seven fifty. What they are allowed to, and they're asking for seven eighty five, which is a change from just point thirty five. If they if we deny this application this variance, and they go to seven point five, you still have the same problem that you're mentioning, don't you? Of course. They, the, the higher the, the wall they're building would obstruct our, our night and, and the sun and the, and the sunlight and, and, uh, and the wheel and those things. Okay. Uh, they already blocked the wheel, right? Okay. All right. So let's, uh, let him, an, uh, any question to this gentleman before we get to, to staff, the, uh, the applicant, Mr. Ross, could you please, uh, Come back and address those uh, questions. Uh, yes, the the height of the, the main walls facing the side there. Again, it's basically due to the uh, where the heights is measured from, which is across the main front wall. It slopes from side to side. That causes the problem. The fact is that we we have uh, comply with the side here at setback. There's like twelve feet distance between the two dwellings that are there. Um, 
So I really don't think there's any, an extra, basically a foot, that is going to make any differences whether it, uh, we're complying with, le with the length and then we're complying with the height of the ball, the, the roof height complies as well. It's just the wall height we're talking about here. So I, I don't think that it's going to make any difference whether it's, uh, it's a minor variance thing, and I don't think it's going to make a big difference on how much light he gets between the houses. There's 12 feet there between the buildings. Uh, he was also talking about the front yard setback. Uh, again, the reason that we're locating it where we are is because of the grading of the lot and the flooding that's taken place in the house that's already there. Um, we, the bylaw requires us to have the garages located at the side of the house because it's a corner lot. And we have to get the garage located at an elevation where it will drain positively back to the road. And in order to do that, we're asking for this extra little bit of uh, height. I don't know if there's anything else I can say with regards to that. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Let's we'll see if, uh, if, they, if there's any question. If there is any question to this uh, applicant, if not, I need a motion. Mr. Klass, Mr. Mr. Klassen, yeah? Yes, uh, so Mr. Chair, so I do appreciate the comments from the neighbor because the current the current dwelling is in the middle of the property and that's going to shift and it's going to have a an impact. But overall, the the variances requested are minor. And so I will uh, I will move to approve them subject to the changes that we've discussed, which is that variance four is deleted, variance five as well. Yeah. And just, I think just to uh, allay any concerns, I'm also going to tie it to the plans that have been presented so that we can be sure that it will be constructed as planned. Could you could you specify what plans you, you mean? Well, a site plan or the a site plans? Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, that's regarding the. Thank you. All right, and um, and can I have a second, please? And uh, there's also uh, urban forestry. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Um, I Second, just um, Ms. Ms. I just I just um, have a have a maybe question. I know we are in the middle of motion, but when we remove variance number four and five, can we still refer it to the previous site plan? Unless the the applicant updated, because on the previous site plan, if we want to tie it, they they already removed that uh, variance site landscaping um sorry for interrupting you it, no, no, it wasn't that's a, friendly. that's a it very was just a, that's a very good that's point. a good point no yeah very good point now well, well, mr well, ross mr ross is your last uh, yes. is your last uh, plan that you submitted reflect these changes already or not i if you could show me the last plan i can i'll be able to tell you Very good point, Mr. Tarodi. Well, the, the, no, oh, maybe, yeah. Well, just explanation. Yeah, in the middle. We're in the middle of a uh, motion, but just an explanation here at, uh, you know what? The, the only things that were, were changed on this, if, if it's changed, I'm not sure that it, that's the the newest site plan. The, the only thing that was being changed there was that 
was what was going in the side yard. Uh, the amount of hard surface there, so it, the house stays exactly the same location as where it was, and nothing changes in that respect. It was just uh, the, the landscaping okay, that went on. It's an explanation. We, we're in the middle of the motion here. Uh, we have a motion from Mr. Klassen to uh, to approve the application subject to those two changes. And maybe um, if you want, Mr. Klassen, maybe remove the uh, condition in the meantime, because they're not sure about the plan. Sure, I, uh, I will uh, amend my uh, my motion to eliminate tying it to the site plan. Okay, so so the 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 um, motion is to approve, subject to the two, the removal of the two variances. And do I have a motion? Do I have a second? And and uh, also uh, forestry. urban forestry. Forestry, right? Second. Mr. Taro, do you second it? All in favor? Okay. Mr. Ross is unanimously approved, subject to forestry and the changes you made, the removal of the two variances, okay? Thank you very much. Okay. Item 43, which is 762 Glengrove Avenue. And here we have just one uh, agent, uh, one uh, speaker who's the agent. Edward Brothers, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, just uh, just state your name, please, and address. Edward Broders. I'm at uh, 191 Young Street, uh, Toronto, Unit 2708, um, M4S 3H8. Thank you. This is for uh, in ground pool and cabana, and just yes, to, um, yeah, just we one. Just, yeah, can you can you please just wait a second? I'll ask the member sorry. if we need a. Just one one variance, uh, thirty five percent, and uh, thirty eight percent. Are you changing anything here? No, you're not changing anything. Do we need the presentation? I'm asking the members. Do we need the presentation? No. Okay. It looks like we don't need the presentation, unless you have something else to say. We're going to move to the decision. Uh, I I just want to to say that there's. Uh... I, I delivered uh, papers or letters to me to ask me to ask me questions. Uh, I only got one. Sure, you're cu you're cutting off. We hardly hear you. Could you please speak? Oh, sorry. Um, I I just had a concern from one neighbor um, when I reached out to them about uh, construction um, and, and code and things like this. And I said this is all done uh, at the permitting phase. It's not affecting it. But I did uh, address. Um, I did speak to, to the uh, to some of the neighbors. Reach out to the neighbors uh, um, a couple of weeks ago, and there's been no um, other comment. Okay, so you talk to the neighbor. Everything is okay. All right. So, can I have a motion, please? Miss, uh, yeah, that's yours. Yeah, Mrs. Ken. Mrs. Ken, thank you, <laughs> Mr. Chairman. Um, this looks like a fairly minor. Um, Variance and that the impact would certainly be minimal, as evidenced by the fact that none of the neighbors have registered any complaints or have appeared here, and as well from the evidence of the applicant. So I move to approve this application. Thank you. Second, Mr. Bartolo, all in favor? Okay, your application is approved. And uh, subject to no conditions. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> You're welcome. That's what uh, that's what Kerry said. Too much. Uh, item forty four, which is one seventy one, Courtley Boulevard, and we have one speaker here, the agent only. Sarah Barclay, are you there? Yes, good afternoon. This is Sarah Barclay. Your name and address, my please. Ad yeah. Your yeah, address. My name, yeah, my address is 34 686 Warden Avenue, M1L4W4. Thank you. So we have here um, 
a rear second floor addition, two variances, three letters of support. Let me ask the members if we need a presentation. Do we need a presentation yes. here? I don't think I see any request for presentation. We will move to the uh, decision directly unless you have something to say. I don't think so. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Any question or motion? Ms. Atarodi? Yes, to you, Mr. Chair. If there is no other question from, from the other panel member, I'm ready to put forward a motion to approve this application, uh, which with no condition. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Thank you. Second, Mr. Uh, Mr. Klassen, all in favor? Okay, your application is approved and there is no conditions. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Forty-five, which is seventy-two Castlefield Avenue. Item 45, and we have here one speaker only, the agent, and uh, Mr. Franco Romano, are you there? Yes, good afternoon, Mr. Chairman. Franco Romano here, 2095 Autumn Breeze Drive South, Miss, uh, Mississauga, Ontario. Thank you. You're the lucky one because we, you're the last one. We're going to go home. Was the first and last. That's <laughs> right. Let's make it a good one. That's right. First and last. Okay, <laughs> this is for a new dwelling, and uh, uh, we have uh, eight variances, excluding the base. Okay, there's a condition here, and uh, we have uh, letters of support and one letter of concern. So, um, could you just maybe a, a very, very short presentation tell us about this here, and uh, we have the staff report to uh, regarding the basement floor. Yes, and... Mr. Chairman, I can say that we're in full support of the staff recommendation. And if we can put up the slide that I had prepared, we can see that uh, the property is located on, on Castlefield. There's a right of way that I've etched in there and a broken black line just to the left of the dwelling or the west of the dwelling. And that in part uh, influences obviously the length of the building, the front yard landscaping, uh, et cetera. What you will see is that the, the proposal is pretty much in line with uh, particularly more recent construction that's occurring within the neighborhood. And this is one of those neighborhoods where under the former bylaw where most of these dwellings have been constructed, the building height would actually comply with the zoning bylaw under the former bylaw. And that's consistent with many of these dwellings that we see within on this street that were constructed prior to 2013. Although since 2013, there have been some dwellings that have a similar physical form, which is an integral garage and two levels of living above. And in this case, under this 2013 bylaw, the basement is starting to get included as part of floor area. And that is, that is not the case for the older dwellings, the dwellings that were constructed before 2013. So while these dwellings have the same physical form, the actual floor space index is uh, in, in this instance, for the subject site, counting the basement and in other dwellings, not counting the basement. So that's why we've uh, we've discussed and confirmed that the 0 0.68 would only apply to that portion of the dwelling that is that does not include the basement. So every other portion of the building is pretty much in line with what's occurring in this neighborhood and there's no unacceptable adverse impact. You'll see that the immediate neighbors are in support. There's uh, few other letters of support and the one person that raised a concern is a few properties removed and they would actually, I don't even believe they'd see this dwelling with the vegetation and the dwellings that are in between. So subject to any questions, sir, I would submit that the variances that are being proposed are minor in nature and respect and reinforce the neighborhood character as well as the street character. Thank you. You're welcome. Any, uh, would have the screen? Okay, now I see you. Any, any question to this uh, gentleman? If not, can I have a motion, please? 
Ms. Tarodi. Um, to you, Mr. Chair, it's very straightforward application, and I would like to put forward a motion to approve this application uh, with the only one staff recommendation that the floor space index of the dwelling, excluding the basement floor, shall be no greater than 0 0.68 times of the area area of the lot, and uh, with no other condition. No condition. That's my motion. Thank you. Second. Mr. Mr. Bartolo, second. All in favor? Okay. Your application is approved, uh, subject to that uh, condition of the staff, and there is no other conditions. Okay. Thank you kindly. Appreciate okay. it. Enjoy the rest of your day and the evening. Take you care. Too. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Now I have. I need the motion to terminate the meeting. Uh, Mrs. Skin. Motion to terminate. I move to terminate. The Thank meeting. you. <laughs> the sound terminate. And second. <laughs> I'll second. Oh. Mr. Klassen. Yeah, Mr. Klassen second. All in favor? Yes. Okay. It's terminated at five, five, six minutes or five, seven minutes.